Oh, hi there. I'm Noah Bradley. This is Handmade House TV. And on this week's episode, I thought I would share with you a little bit about ICFs, Insulated Concrete Form Construction. So stay tuned. Well, all right, on today's episode, we're going to talk about ICFs, Insulated Concrete Form Construction and what I might have to say about it. Uh, I got a request from one of you guys that uh, mentions that it, um, that occasionally I'll say that I, there are five different forms of construction that I like, and I'm, basically I leave the rest of them alone. Uh, I love log cabin construction, traditional, and I love timber framing, uh, as authentic as possible, and uh, real stone work. And I'm a big fan of, uh, of modern stick-built construction. I shouldn't say modern, maybe classic stick-built construction is better. Uh, uh, modern construction seems to be uh, getting a little bit too much into engineered products, and it's gotten away from uh, the stick-built construction that was just common just 10 or 20 years ago. Uh, but the, the final leg, uh, the fifth leg, that I don't speak about, a whole lot about is ICFs. And that's because I don't have a whole lot of construction experience with it. I've probably done five to 10 different projects. Uh, my own foundation of, of the home that I'm um, living in here, uh, the basement of it, it was built out of ICFs. And uh, that tends to be, it's either basements or, um, or uh, foundations is where I've used ICFs. I have yet to build a full-fledged home out of ICFs. Um, and I actually love it. And what an ICF is, it's basically if you envision a hollow Lego block uh, and that you, you put these uh, blocks uh, piece by piece in place, uh, and then once you get absolutely uh, finished with them all, all the window openings cut in place and all of the rebar put in there according to manufacturer's constructions, then you bring in concrete trucks uh, with a pumper and uh, you basically spray, uh, fill, uh, pour uh, concrete down into all the hollow cavities of these Lego blocks and you end up with an extremely uh, solid uh, home um, and uh, one that is extremely well insulated, amazingly insulated. I think that my basement is R32, which is double nearly double what the code restrictions would say for it. And um, it's a, an easy to finish product. If you want to, to apply, say, drywall or paneling on the inside, you just sort of glue it to the wall. Uh, you can nail it through some of the ribs that are uh, made into these foam blocks. Uh, and on the outside, most people will go ahead and uh, apply some kind of uh, parging, uh, some kind of troweled on cement mortar, or a synthetic product over the outside and, uh, and paint it. And you can uh, brick veneer it, stone veneer it, whatever you'd like to do as well. Um, uh, I absolutely love this form of construction. I would like to build a house of it that is designed to take advantage of what it, of what it is, um, of, of, of the product that it gives you. And the the thing that comes to mind when I'm, when you're building such thick walls, and literally these things are 16 inches thick, uh, two feet thick. When you're building a, a home that thick, to, in my mind, what I'm seeing, what, what my mind wants to comprehend is that the home is made out of stone. Uh, if it's that thick, if it's that massive, naturally it's built of a, of a, of a solid material like stone. And so if, if the one suggestion I can offer you, if you're thinking of building a home um, that is built of uh, ICFs, I would encourage you to, uh, to, to look to the designs, to the proportions of really nice stone homes and mimic that design and carry it forward with the ICFs. Uh, something like, a, like an old Irish stone cottage to me sounds like the perfect uh, method of using ICFs. One of the, the great joys of ICF construction is that these foam uh, blocks weigh almost nothing. I mean, maybe a pound or two a piece. Uh, I have known of a couple that were in their 70s and built their own home using ICF construction. Uh, and they just, you know, they cut these things. They're real easy to cut. They're real easy to carry around and, and uh, pop into place. And then they hired a concrete company to come in and, and fill the foam 
uh, blocks with them and, and they had the walls of their home uh, finished. Uh, and, uh, and it's a way to, to save your money and make ICF construction uh, more affordable for your, for your future home is by considering doing the work yourself. It seemed there are a ton of different manufacturers of ICF construction. I don't know of any of them that I would have ever seen that are bad. It seems like every time I've built a, a home of ICF construction that I've used a different brand and uh, I've all, all of them have worked out just fine. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a question of that at all. Uh, most of these companies that, that produce ICF um, uh, uh, construction uh, units uh, they also offer uh, classes uh, to teach you how to use it and you actually get hands-on experience doing it. So it's a matter of learning a new skill uh, and then putting it to use. Uh, typically from what I've seen that ICF homes can be uh, as much as 10% more than a standard stick built home. But, and, but then over time, uh, over time, ICFs will cost you, will be the, probably the cheapest home you can build uh, because of the energy savings and because of the durability of the home. Uh, if you build out a home out of concrete, that home will stand for centuries, as long as it's aesthetically appealing. I've noticed that homes built to last for a thousand years frequently get bulldozed because they're, they're ugly. Uh, so you need to build something that you will it'll be timeless in its visual appeal uh, moving forward uh, in order for people to appreciate it and keep from destroying it. But other than that, uh, a stone home is an extremely safe, secure, basically fireproof, extremely well insulated. And someone pointed out that they're even bulletproof uh, and something to be said for that as well. Um, but uh, so ICF concern, the, only, the, the one thing that I could caution you with, with ICFs, the only time I've ever seen it be a problem uh, is that most people envision the ICFs blocks as being uh, secure once they get them up in place. And then it's just a matter of carefully putting the concrete in and, uh, and everything will go well. But my experience has taught me that the, the force and the weight of concrete is tremendous, especially when you're talking about a wall 10 to 12 feet tall. Um, it's there's a lot, a lot to that, and so um, they will teach you in the course in order to put up plenty of uh, bracing on the outside to hold everything in place. Once you've assembled it, you put up a lot of bracing around the inside and the outside in order to hold everything in place, in order to hold back the pressure of the concrete as it's being poured into place. Uh, I would encourage you to do that and then probably double it. Um, it, it you, because if you experience a blowout, if, uh, if one of them separates or lifts or, um, or if there's a crack in it or whatever else, that concrete will just come roaring out of that spot and you've brought yourself, you've brought your project to a halt until that can be repaired. Uh, you have a tremendous mess of of lost concrete that uh, is lo now lost on the ground and it needs to be cleaned up before it turns into a rock. Um, and also you're going to end up with a, with a cold joint between what you've already poured and the rest of what you poured. It's not a tragedy, uh, but it's not a great thing either. Typically you want to pull your, pour your walls in one day uh, as soon as possible so that there's no cold joints in any of the pouring that goes on. So anyway, it was just a, a I just wanted to go through the brief basics of ICF construction uh, with you today. There's a, there's a lot of information you can do to it. One day in the future, perhaps I'll try to put together an entire step-by-step -step, uh, premium academy course on how to put together ICFs. Uh, you're going to have to pray for me to live a long time for that one, though, because I've got, I've got to, I'm still working on the Timber Framing Academy. And the next one will be uh, probably on stick built construction. I've, I've had people say, please do one on buying land or do one on, on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on starting your own uh, construction business, uh, being a handmade artisan, uh, learning how to, how to earn a living by, by being in the building trade. And so clearly there's a lot of information I need to pass on before I kick off here. Uh, anyway, I didn't mean to ramble on. Uh, uh, ICF's wonderful form of construction in my top five. Uh, seriously consider it. 
uh, particularly if you want uh, an extremely durable home that lasts you a long time and that anybody can build on their own. So you take guys take care. We'll see you here next week on Handmade House TV. That's it for this week. Bye now.